any question for, for the, the speakers? Hello, I'm Jay from uh, University of Delaware. Um, my question is, uh, you are talking about the re reversible uh, measures for the future. But I think today the main dispute is people worry about the irre irreversible damage in the future. Yeah. So, so how do you deal with this issue? Yeah, you're right. It is difficult to, to imagine a kind of reversible thing with uh, damages. But uh, that's why I, I think we, what is important is this history of nuclear waste policy is to learn about the past, in fact, the, the, to not again to, to make the same mistakes, in fact. So that's why I agree that it's not possible to... to introduce some uh, reversible uh, principle in, in the, when uh, damages are already made, but uh, we can use the history to, to imagine uh, something like no regret policies, in fact, in the future. And in the no regret policies, uh, in no regret policies, the, the principle of reversible decision, I think it's very important so as to escape from what we could call uh, a un un kind of entrapment of history, uh, a kind of lo technological locking, you know. So, that's right. Thank you. Yeah. Other questions? Michael? Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, a couple of points on the, on the question of uh, reversibility. I think what happened in France, too, is that there, it's, it's slightly misleading concept because you know I would call it rather retrievability approach rather than reversibility it's in fact it's not an engineered design to be reversible in the sense that you wouldn't put it 500 meters or 700 meters underground and call it reversible right? to me a ge geological disposal concept is irreversible by definition so it's rather the idea of keeping it open for a hundred and then and they call it reversible. And I think it's a really it's, it's a real technical debate too. What does that mean? You know, keeping it open is that really reversible? You know, from a from a concept point of view. Mm -hmm. um, the second point I wanted to make on the on, on your presentation on France, actually historically, I I think the way you present it it overestimates largely the role of the president Pompidou and de Gaulle. They, they were basically puppets of the technocrat in, uh, elite at that time. Uh, they, they didn't take the lead. It's, it's really the level, the technocrat level underneath that, that took the decision. And the, what was called la guerre des filières, the, 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 they, they literally called it the war on reactor technologies. That was the term used in, in France in 69, between 69 and 71, which was uh, basically decided, not by, by the, the president, but it was, was decided mainly on the argument to say that the Westinghouse technology will be dominated. So the technical experience that that will generate will be so uh, so dominating that, that it's impossible to compete with it. That was the main argument to decide in favor of Westinghouse. And it's really, it's really EDF. Uh, uh, that that won that. It's not the, the sort of the the, the the transatlantic tendency of Pompidou that played the, the largest role historically. So I would I would weigh this historically quite quite differently. But it's that's an interpretation. Okay, thank you. That's more a comment than a question. Right? Yeah. Okay. And that one. Uh, uh, 